Hello, thanks for taking the time to check out my tutorial videos. Um, if you're a, base, a beginner player and uh, you want to learn the basics, you're in the right place. Uh, if you're a more advanced player, you probably want to skip ahead a bit. Um, this video is mainly just going to cover the basics of the UI, uh, some unique features of Men of War, and, and get into the basic infantry controls. Um, so, uh, Meta War plays very much like an RT, a regular RTS in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, you have the uh, screen scrolling. Uh, you've got uh, you know various terrain laid out for cover and movement. Uh, buildings. Um, you can actually enter a lot of buildings. Um, you can use anything for cover uh, to varying uh, degrees of success. Of success. Um, and if you hold the mouse button, the middle mouse button, you can actually uh, traverse the uh, camera. You can uh, change the uh, pitch and angle here. And if you scroll in and out, you can actually zoom the camera in and out. So those are your kind of your basic uh, camera controls. Um, I'm going to start off by buying a regular infantry squad from my buy menu here. So You'll notice you have infantry, specialized soldiers, transport and support, artillery, tanks, or support weaponry. Really, it's just your light tanks, uh, your regular medium to heavy tanks, and your specialized tank destroyers. And these are all going to be different for the different factions. I'm using U.S. just to uh, uh, have some uh, ease of... Uh, familiarity here since uh, you new players are going to be playing the uh, Overlord campaign and uh, you'll already kind of have used some of these. So um, the first and most important thing to get out of your minds when you play Men of War is treating infantry or tanks or anything as a group. Okay, Everything, every unit in Men of War it, is yes, an sir. individual. Yes, sir. Okay. It, sir. When you buy a squad, you get a group of infantry, yes, but you're Got going it, to sir. control them uh, to a more individual level. Um, yes, sir. You, uh, as I'm showing you here, you're going to select it, with left click, yes, sir. and you're going to move with right click. Okay, and you'll see uh, they've got little circles, and then those it, around sir. them, and they change color. Um, to either yellow or white, and we'll get more into that yes, sir. Uh, in a little bit. But for now, you know, you can yes, just sir. drag that box, just like most other RTSs, and uh, you're going to move with uh, right click. Um, you'll notice here that uh, the map is revealed, okay, but you have a fog of war. So you can notice here um, it, this sir. rifleman here is facing towards us, towards the camera and you can see the dark gray fog of war and then the illuminated uh, line of sight so all units have line of sight in this game um, infantry have it, the sir. most you'll see as i turn him towards the uh, city here he's got this big cone of sight in front of him um, men of, all, most of the units in men of war have a cone uh, there are some specialized units that uh, have a uh, whole area um, the area behind the soldier's view, you just get a little bit of peripheral vision here, uh, but mainly you got the, the big cone in front of you for your uh, sight area. Uh, and line of sight is extremely important. Um, you'll learn as you get more experience that uh, sight is everything. Uh, you can't, if you can't see something, you can't shoot it. Uh, most of the time, at least. Uh, so, now that we got the basics out of the way, I want to show you uh, some unique features of uh, Men of War. So, what I want to show you first, and get in behind this rifleman, is the coolest feature of Men of War by far, uh, and that's the direct control system. Yes, so, I've sir. got my rifleman selected here, and I'm going to go into direct control mode. So, you can do this one of two ways. You can hold the control key, okay? Or you can just hit the E echo key. Uh, control will toggle it on and off. Uh, you just hold it and it's on, let go and it's off. E, you just uh, turn it on and off. 
um, just from one click. So you notice here, um, I get this aiming reticle, okay? The dot in the center is where I'm actually pointing my rifle, and then the, the outer circle around it is uh, the area that I could hit. So your shots will land anywhere in that outer circle. So you'll notice as I aim closer, that circle gets tighter. Obviously, I can hit things closer to me more easily. And then as I aim farther away, that circle will get bigger. Let's just uh, move over here. And you can see that circle is getting slightly bigger as I aim farther away. Okay, and, and you'll notice here I can move the camera as much as I like. And I still have that rifleman selected, so I'm still uh, still got his little aiming reticle anywhere I put my mouse. Okay, now I can fire with left click, and you'll see the reticle. You've probably noticed that the reticle has been changing color as I mouse over different objects. Okay, all the cover is dynamic. That is, its uh, density and thickness comes into play uh, whenever it's struck by any kind of projectile whether it's a rifle bullet or a tank uh, tank round um, and different rounds will have different penetrations when, when we talk about tanks but we'll get into that in a different video but for now uh, small arms uh, generally you're only going to be penetrating you know trees you know, or uh, thin pieces of wood uh, in some cases uh, walls but not very often uh, you'll see here when I when I mouse over the rubble I get a red circle that means uh, generally those rounds aren't going through there actually pretty much the red circle means they're never gonna go through there. Um, you'll notice as I'm shooting it I'm as I am when I aim towards the top of the rubble I'm getting some rounds flying over that's because that that aiming circle that circles kind of half over the rubble, half not. So that means about half of my shots should be flying over and half of them should be hitting the rubble. And you can see the ones hitting the rubble, that's not even coming close. So I can even change my view here. And nothing's coming through there. And I, if you look closely, some of the rounds I'm firing are actually ricocheting off the rubble and flying up into the air. Um, yeah, that one there went off to the side. Yeah, so you can see. So you can see I shot here and it actually landed here. Um, rounds are always live until they, they uh, lose all velocity. So I might have lost some kinetic energy when it struck the rubble and landed into the ground but if there was a, a soldier here in the path of that bullet it still would have dealt some damage to them uh, so it's kind of an interesting uh, uh, aspect of the physics engine is uh, the uh, the way that the uh, projectiles are handled so that's kind of the basics of uh, direct control it, um, the only other thing to point out uh, just to give you the key maps here uh, if you obviously we found out left click is uh, the fire if you right click that will switch to your secondary weapon in this case it's an anti-personnel grenade and I'll you know I get a little dot here where Let's I want to throw it fire. and then I can throw with left click um, I can move with uh, WAS, WASD in my case I kind of forget what the default is but uh, I suggest WASD just because that's uh, what most people are used to. And uh, of course, the downfall of that is uh, you can see your aim kind of is lost when you're moving. Uh, don't generally m run and shoot with infantry, um, especially not riflemen. But in some cases, you can do some damage. Not typically, you, you want to stand still when you shoot. So, uh, since we've talked yes, about shooting a bit, let's uh, talk about cover. So, pretty much anything in the game can be used as cover. Um, walls, rubble, trees, bushes, 
Uh, of course, you know, some are going to offer more protection than others. And as you can see here, I've got some uh, infantry, uh, an SMG and a, and a rifleman selected here. They show up in my current selection box. And uh, when I mouse over this rubble here, I get some silhouettes of uh, infantrymen crouched. And what that's doing for me is that's helping me position my infantry behind this, this cover. So if I just right click once, my troops will make their way over and fill those positions that used to have the little silhouettes. So uh, that will show up with pretty much any object here. So you know you can see I can uh, I can position them facing uh, at angles behind this uh, is that a trolley map or something, a bus map, and we can evaluate the value of this cover by coming around the other side, and you can see they're kind of poking their heads out. Now if the enemy fire was coming straight from this little patch of rubble here. That would be uh, that'd be an okay amount of cover. Of course, uh, as soon as I get somebody coming down this road or shooting from this church, uh, this rifleman here yes, is sir. quickly going to find himself uh, uh, full, all full of holes. So uh, you always want to kind of keep in mind when you're it, positioning sir. your soldiers. You know where are the where are the shots enemy fire going to come from and uh, how well am I actually being covered um, so, you know how, how how much of my soldiers actually exposed here so in positioning them um, yes you can use the silhouettes they generally work pretty well uh, however you can see in this case I had the option to go prone with the silhouette and that's really not doing anything for me I'm just shooting into the side of this rubble so a lot of the time you can use the silhouette to kinda of get to where you want to be and then you can change your position as needed uh, you can either do that with or I'm sorry I should say stance you can change the stance either with this button here in your lower right UI or uh, as I have it I have uh, stance up set to Q so I can toggle up and then my stance down set to Z which I can go down so I can go you know up to crouching down to prone or maybe all the way up to standing and then just for emergencies I have uh, prone set to alt so very quickly you know I've, I've got a Sorry. enemy tank or something coming I just say everybody hit the deck and start we'll do that. you know moving out from there so your your stance uh, in progress. will, will yes, sir. help you out in a lot of cases trying to get away from fire or, or uh, just quickly uh, taking a different uh, position between uh, between yourself and uh, the enemy. Yeah. You know, so if uh, I had an enemy enemy machine gunner Got it, sir. Uh, who had flanked me and was firing from the side here you could see a lot of a lot of my troops here would be exposed to fire and so I could say yes, you know sir. hey I yes, want these sir. guys to yes, hit sir. the deck this guy needs to just completely reposition himself and crouch and this guy I might want to move so he's got a little bit more cover between him and the got machine it, gunner and then maybe these guys I just move out a little bit so then they could be returning fire um, that's that's really uh, all you need to know about positioning for basics. Uh, you just need to be aware of their stance and the type of cover and the angle between enemy fire and, and the infantry behind the cover. So uh, now I just want to talk about grouping. So as I mentioned, you've got, got it, that sir. yellow and white circles. Uh, what this is doing is, you can see on the left here, I've got all these different groups. All right, so so let's start over. Let's select yes, everything. Sir. We've got all of our guys in their original squad, right? So they're all going to move sir. together now. Okay, so all right, they've regrouped themselves. And I've got all my squad with a white circle. 
and then my machine gunner in this uh, at this point has the yellow. Okay, that marks him as the squad leader. Okay, the uh, the squads are formed by you selecting troops. Okay, so let's say I just select yes, these sir. three. Okay, we now have two squads. One with three, and one with, uh, what's that? Seven. So it's automatically made one of my riflemen the squad leader. Now, uh, ta tactics-wise, this comes into play when yes, you're sir. moving. Um, depending on whether they're in cover or just walking, uh, that gets a little tricky, so we'll talk about more, th more of that later, but yes, for now sir. all you need to know about squads Got is it, if you select the squad leader, you select the whole squad, Got it, sir. and when you're moving for cover from cover, your squad leader is going to move first, and your, your troops are generally going to yes, form around that squad leader, and you can change who is squad leader using K. So, yes, sir. if I want to disband the squad, I can just hit K, and then that breaks yes, them up into it, individual it, riflemen, and then you can see, of course, each one is their own, quote-unquote, squad leader, since they're in a one-man squad. And if yes, I sir. select them, Got it, sir. Yes, sir. I can supposedly, well... Got it, sir. I'll have to get back on that one. Got There's it, a way sir. to change the squad, who is the squad leader, but generally it doesn't really matter. Yes, sir. We'll get more into that when I get into squad tactics more. So, uh, when the only other, the only, la the last thing I want to say about squads is you can, uh, hotkey the squads. So, um, let's say I wanted this group of riflemen to be group one. I hit shift one. And then I get a little one next to them. And if I want to quickly select the other squad, I could either click its yes, icon. Sir. You can see I've selected them. Or I can make them a another group designation. Let's say two. So I hit shift two. So now I get a little two there. And uh, I can toggle between them using one and two. So I hit one. Got it, sir. I get the rifleman. I hit yes, two. Sir. I get the rest of the squad. Um, so that... that can come in handy um, at times when you want to keep things a little more organized. Although in the chaos that is uh, Men of War, that you, that you can you can quickly uh, um, kind of discard the uh, the group uh, grouping features of the infantry and and just be moving uh, units individually or you know just Got just it, through the selection. Yes, um, generally, I don't mess with it a whole lot, but it's important to know the mechanics. Got it, sir. Got it, sir. And you can see, uh, even if I select them all, Got it, if sir. I hit one yes, and two, sir. I can still break them up into their uh, squad. So, you know, if you if you want to keep track of an individual unit that you you have some special plans for, and you don't want to get them lost in the fray, uh, you can use that for, for to your advantage. Um, the the other handy feature of that is if I'm maybe off in the other part of the map doing something, and I double tap one. It'll bring me back to that that group quickly. Uh, double hit. I'll double hit two, and it'll do the same thing. It takes me right back to them. Uh, the same works with uh, clicking. If I double click, it'll bring me back to that group. If I double click it, this, sir. back to that group. So um, you can use either the yes, buttons sir. on the side here, it, or use the the group hotkeys if you set them. So yes, if you need to quickly get to a unit. Um, you can use that little interface there on the left. So, uh, it, another sir. unique feature to Men of War is the inventory system. So if you have uh, a unit selected, and this works with any unit, vehicles and, and infantry, and you hit the I key, you will bring up the inventory screen. So this is all the important equipment that this unit is carrying. Okay, so we have the M1 Grand, some rifle ammo, uh, bandages, MG ammo, an AP grenade, helmet, and a sandbag. So the equipped equipment is highlighted with blue. So right now he's wearing his helmet and he has his M1 Grand equipped. You can 
actually drag that out of there and he will and you can see he has dropped his helmet uh, if I want him to pick it back up I mouse over it and I get this grasping icon so I can right click and he will pick it back up and since it's a yes, helmet sir. and he doesn't want his head blown off he just automatically re-equips it um, same thing with his rifle Got it, sir. I've dropped that on the ground we can see he does not have anything in his hands, and he's we'll dropped his helmet. So, you know, let's say I'm zoomed out here. You know, those are a little harder to see um, when I'm in my, you know, normal zoom level, which is generally all the way zoomed out. So, a uh, nice little uh, feature that they give you to quickly re-equip your troops is you can hold the C button, Charlie, and you can see the equipment on the ground here has been highlighted so that lets me more easily mouse over them find them and right click them to tell my soldiers yes, to pick them back up so uh... some side notes here uh... rifle ammo is universal um, there is no multiple types of rifle ammo same thing with smg and machine gun ammo so if you loot uh, another soldier you can pick up their rifle ammo it's going to be compatible with whatever rifle you have uh, as long as you have a rifle and not a SMG or a machine gun although you could argue uh, machine gun bullets are just rifle bullets uh, but belted together but uh, they they make the distinction between the two um, changing what you have equipped there's a couple different ways uh, some more practical than others so you can see here uh, my rifleman uh, in this box here has the rifle his M1 selected that's quickly shows you what he has equipped uh, again I've already said you can see it's blue highlighted in the inventory screen that also tells you it's equipped um, and then in this second box here is his secondary weapons you can see he has a single anti-personnel grenade so I can right click in the inventory and he will pull out that grenade he now has it equipped you can see it's highlighted now uh, I can also um, right click the rifle and he will shoulder that see I can right click it again he'll bring it back out uh, I can click the secondary box here and click the grenade which is a lot faster than opening the inventory window um, you also so I click the rifle to bring that back out you can also uh, hit F1 which is the shortcut for your first secondary weapon so in this case my AP grenade and then to throw the grenade I can either hit F1 and click and he will throw it. Of course, now I'm out of grenades. Got uh, it, sir. Or in direct control, as I've said, uh, we can right click to switch to the secondary weapon. And in direct control, a unique feature with AP grenades is you can actually cook them. So if I hold the left button and ah! cook off a couple seconds and throw it, it will explode, you know, obviously faster. So it makes it a little more deadly. Um, depending on uh, the amount of suppression that the enemy units are under and what veterancy level they are uh, yes, they can sir. actually pick up your grenades and throw them away uh, which will drastically reduce their lethality so yes, sir. Um, it does come in handy to cook yes, grenades sir. not to mention your your uh, enemy uh, or I should say your opponent uh, will have less time to react to them um, the SMG in troops you can see they have SMG ammo. Uh, they come with a few more grenades. Uh, I'll get more in, into more detail when I do the individual factions. Um, but uh, you can see they have more secondary weapons than the uh, uh, riflemen. But, it, but still, F1 will be your AP grenades. So I can Bang! quickly throw those. Uh, F2 will quickly equip your AT or anti tank grenades. And F three will quickly equip your smoke grenades so smoke grenades uh, work the same as AP they have a little more range uh, 
AT grenades. Uh, you cannot cook. They are uh, explode on impact. And they have uh, quite a bit more punch to them. Uh, for Let's example, I could just completely destroy that cover there uh, with a single AT grenade. And uh, as, as we'll see more in, in the later videos, I'll definitely demonstrate how destructible uh, all this uh, uh, terrain and, and buildings and cover is. Uh, it, the physics engine is very well uh, developed in this game, and uh, we'll, we'll get more into that uh, in a later video. So that pretty much uh, covers the basics uh, that I want to uh, showcase in this video. Um, so I uh, I hope that you've yes, gotten sir. something out of this, and uh, if you're a new player, uh, I certainly remember back when I first started, I, I uh, was in desperate need to understand a lot yes, of these uh, features, so I hope you've uh, uh, learned a few things. Uh, so please join me in uh, the next video, right, and sir. we'll uh, uh, get more into it. All right.